and welcome. I'm Judy Taylor. Most people have seen a traditional hand-hooked rug somewhere. It might be a family heirloom handed down through generations, or a rug in an antique store, or one of the many hooked rugs featured in country-type magazines at the supermarket. But few people realize how easy and fun these rugs are to make. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to hook a rug, how to clean and care for your rugs, and show some of the variety of materials which can be used in rug hooking. Anyone can do this craft, and in the pioneer days of our country, everyone did it. Traditional rug hooking may go back as many as 400 years in Europe, but it wasn't until the late 1700s in colonial America that the craft flourished. Some of the reasons why the craft achieved such widespread popularity may be its practicality, its versatility, and its portability. The people who settled our country could not bring much with them, so when they needed a rug to warm the floors of their new homes, they had two choices. One, they could have one shipped from England at great expense, or they could make a rug with their hands and ordinary materials that they had available. Like yarn, of course everyone spun in those days, or worn out blankets or garments made of woolen material, and feed sacks. All the colonists had to bring with them was a simple hook, which unlike a large and bulky loom, was very easy for them to carry on a boat or wagons west. But the most compelling reason that rug hooking became so popular in the late 1700s and all through the 1800s, in my opinion, was the tremendous freedom of creative expression which the craft offers. The rug maker begins with a piece of burlap or other material, and just like a blank canvas to a painter, the maker can do anything he or she envisions from a simple geometric pattern to a complex and realistic pictorial. People took great pride in the rugs that they were able to create. A Scottish historian and expert on hooked rugs, Anne Macbeth, once wrote that the value of an antique rug depended in a large part on its design. They tell a story, she said. Their personal qualities appeal to us because subconsciously we feel that some interesting or ambitious human being is trying to express him or herself in every design. Most of my rugs are made with hand-spun wool or mohair yarn from fleeces grown right here on Adeldahl Farm. Angora goats produce mohair, which on a baby goat is fine and soft, but as the animal matures, the fiber becomes strong and lustrous, perfect for rug making. Jacob's sheep are quite unusual, with their spotted fleeces and four horns. They also produce a variety of fleeces, from soft sweater wool to durable rug wool, in striking blacks, whites, and grays. I shear my sheep and goats, and then the fleece is washed and sometimes dyed. This fierce looking gadget opens up the lock so they can be put through the carter. The carter aligns the fiber so that they're roughly parallel to each other.
Then the fiber is spun into a one, two, or three ply yarn. Here I'm spinning an adult mohair fleece, which will make an extremely durable yarn with high luster. There are also many breeds of sheep which produce excellent rug wool, including Romney, Lincoln, Navajo, Border Lester, Scottish Blackface, and many others. The fleece can be dyed before spinning, or the yarn can be dyed. Or natural colored wool can be used. I'm going to demonstrate rug hooking using one of my own kits. These are my original designs and I spin all the yarn myself. They're designed as beginner's projects. They're small so they're quick to finish, they're fairly easy to follow, and yet they contain enough detail so that you can get the hang of working with detailed areas. Once you finish a project like this one, you'll be ready for anything. First, sit with your knees comfortably apart. Tuck the backing around your legs and with the yarn below and the hook above push in the hook where you want to begin. You catch the yarn on the hook and you pull it right through. For your very first project I recommend starting in a solid colored area because then you get used to how far apart to place the loops. So the perfect place to begin on this kit is the heart. I always outline an area first, hooking about every hole, and then when I fill it in, I hook about every other hole. You don't want to pack the loops in too tightly or your rug won't lay flat. Let me show you what my left hand is doing under the burlap. I push in the hook and I grab the yarn giving myself a couple of inches to pull up before pulling out that last loop. Now I grab the yarn here, not here. And once I've pulled the yarn through, I feel with my left hand to make sure I've got that flat across the back. And then I pull down the rest of the yarn till the loop is the desired height. Let me show you that from a different angle. I push the hook in, grab the yarn, and I feel it come tight across the back so I don't pull out that last loop. Then with my left hand, I pull that loop down to the desired height. When I'm doing detailed areas, or the outline of an area, I like to hook just inside the marked line on the burlap because the loops tend to spread so that by staying inside the line, the desired effect will be achieved. <laughs> As soon as I finish an area, I cut the yarn, leaving a tail, just as when I began. As soon as I've hooked all around the tail, I can cut it off, even with the surrounding loops.
When you pull down on a loop, you'll feel a little bump of tension right before that point where you would pull it all the way out. When doing straight lines or right angles, don't use the grain of the burlap as a strict guide. For that matter, don't even use the design on the burlap as a strict guide. Burlap is an open weave fabric, and when you stretch it a lot, it changes. So it's best to eyeball the lines and angles to get them just the way you want them. If you're not happy with a section, feel free to pull it out and try again. Many people ask me, what keeps those loops from pulling out? Well, there are a couple of things going on. First, you're pulling a thick piece of yarn through a very small hole, and as you pull that loop down, you're compressing all the air out of the yarn so that the loop spreads out above the hole. That's part of what's anchoring the loop in place. Then, as you build in around that loop, you're creating a pretty tough mat. I try to make my loops no higher than a quarter of an inch for a couple of reasons. The higher you make your loops, the greater the chance that you'll catch a loop on something and pull out some of the yarn. Also, short, densely packed loops keep dirt from getting down into the backing. With a little practice, you'll find that balance between hooking a solidly packed mat, but not so tight that it won't lay flat. Even if some loops get pulled out during the life of your rug, they can easily be rehooked.
Now we're finished hooking the rug. Now we're ready to do the hem. It's a good idea to block it using a steam iron on the back side of your rug. One method of finishing a rug is simply to fold the burlap over and hem it to the back like I've done here. It's important to take deep stitches so that you're sure you're grabbing the backing, not the yarn. And since this is a wall hanging, that's a perfectly good way to finish this rug. But I'd like to demonstrate a great method of finishing a floor rug that will be walked on and washed regularly. This is a method which protects the edge of the rug, which on old rugs is typically the first place to wear out. A creased edge like this one can become brittle with wear, and once that happens, all the yarn on the edge will go. So for this method, cloth piping is sewn into the selvage, extending beyond the hooked edge of the rug. Now I'm going to finish binding this edge. Now you don't have to tie a knot with this yarn, you just sew right over it. So these little ends are just going to disappear. This prevents the creased edge of the simple hem because this edge is round. Binding a rug in this way will add years of life to the rug, and it also gives it a professional looking edge. I don't recommend the use of latex backing on your hand hooked rugs for several reasons. One, it's not necessary to hold the rug together. And second, your backing is more likely to rot because of poor air circulation. And third, rugs with rubber or glue on them can never be repaired or rehooked. If you want to prevent a rug slipping on a hardwood floor, here's another tip. You can purchase a rubber mat at a carpet store, cut to the desired size. There are antique hooked rugs in this country that are over 200 years old. So when I make rugs, I try to make them as durable as I can, so that with proper care, my rugs will be around 200 years from now. Hand hooked rugs can and should be walked on, but they should not be kept in a place where they will get wet. Even when we wash them, we just give them a gentle surface cleaning. Don't use a regular vacuum cleaner on your rugs for fear that you might catch a piece of yarn and unravel some of the rug. A handheld vacuum is okay though. A very simple recipe for cleaning your rugs is a dash of mild detergent and a dash of vinegar in about two cups of cold water. Make sure the detergent dissolves completely. Put in a sponge and squeeze it almost all out. You'll still feel a film of soap, that's all you'll need. Then in a circular motion, gently rub the surface of the rug, front and back. Then you can rinse the sponge in clean water to remove the dirt, and then back to the soapy water. Dab with a dry towel and lay your rug to dry somewhere where it can get lots of air. I use our old window screens on soup cans so I get plenty of air underneath. When you plan your future projects, you will need to decide which materials to use, and the first decision you will need to make is which backing to use. Burlap is great for wall hangings or stuffed animals or any other item which won't need to be washed regularly. You see, burlap is the material that we use to wrap the root balls of trees in, precisely because it rots so well. Now that being said, many old antique rugs are in existence today and they were done on feed sacks. So with proper care, burlap will last. It just isn't the best material to use for rugs that will be washed regularly. The very best backing for your really nice rugs for the floor is linen. 
Now, as you can see, it looks a lot like burlap, and it's made especially for rug hooking, but it's much tougher than burlap, and it's naturally rot resistant. You see, when the flax plant is prepared for spinning, the plant is put in a pond, and everything that doesn't rot is what is spun into linen. And since rot resistance is so important to hand hooked rugs, I don't think there's anything better than linen. Why put all that work and care and love into a rug only to have your backing fail you in the end? This is monk's cloth. It's cotton, and as you can see, it's much softer and lighter than linen or burlap. I like to use this when I'm doing garments or projects using fine detail. Because there are so many threads per inch, I can get the details just the way I want them. So these are the most common backing fabrics used in rug hooking, but any fabric with an open weave would work. I most often spin my own yarn, but this is an example of hooking with a commercially spun wool yarn. A friend of mine who raises Navajo sheep had her fleeces spun. Many mills that will card your fleeces will also spin them into yarn. You can specify how thick you want the yarn. So you don't need hand spun yarn. You can have your fleeces spun or you can purchase yarn. This is an example of hooking with unspun locks of wool. This is a washed border lester fleece. And as you can see, it's naturally very curly. These were hooked using strips of wool fabric from a skirt purchased at a thrift store. Since this was a plaid fabric, the strips came out in mostly white, green, and red. So I used these colors in my design. Of course, you can dye your fabric just like yarn. Cut your strips on the grain, not on the bias. A lightweight wool like this can give a rag rug effect, but you can also hook with a thicker wool, like an old blanket. These are usually fulled or felted, so when you hook with this kind of fabric, the effect looks more like yarn, without the frayed edges. Experiment with the width of the strips. A wide cut for a primitive effect, or thin strips for a fine detailed effect. This is another method of finishing your edges. The braided border protects the burlap edge from wear. Now you certainly don't have to hook with thick yarn or fabric. This dollhouse rug is an example of hooking with a finer yarn. This is wool embroidery thread. Mark your design on your backing using a permanent marker. Then feel free to experiment. The design you draw is not going to show on the finished product, so you can change your mind. Let's say you want to change the shape or the color of an area. You can do that without taking out any more yarn than you need. Unlike knitting or weaving where you really have to go all the way back if you want to change something. To determine how much yarn you will need for a project, do a gauge. Draw a 3 by 3 inch square on your backing. Hook the area. and then pull it out. And measure the yarn. Divide by nine and you'll know how many feet you used per square inch. It's a good idea to incorporate your initials and the year in your hook design. In my spinning wheel rug, for instance, I've used my initials and the year as part of the design. Being able to accurately date your rug will add to its value. You can also have your own labels made up. The method of rug hooking that I do, where you wrap the backing around your legs, is called Nantucket rug hooking because it originated on that island in Massachusetts. However, traditional rug hooking can be done on a frame using exactly the same technique. These are examples of frames that you could find at any craft store. However, there are also frames that are made especially for rug hooking. Those you could order through a catalog if you wish. Here at Edelval Farm, we have a wide variety of supplies for the rug hooker, including hooks and backing, custom hand spinning, as well as hand spun kits, complete with original design and all the yarn you'll need. Please feel
feel free to contact me if you have any questions about rug hooking. There are lots of wonderful magazines and books that I can recommend. I would especially like to hear from you once you've completed your first project. And so, before I leave you, I'd like to show you once again my very first hand spun project. With traditional rug hooking, you can do anything you want. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, the possibilities for creative expression are truly endless.